Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 269, featuring the third, and at least for now, final installment of my interview with Tom Hall. In this part of the interview, we talk about his Anachronox game, a Rise of the, of the Triad, and uh, what he wants to see in Anachronox 2, and why it's taking a while for that to come together. Uh, really exciting stuff for fans of those games. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover, so without further ado, here is Mr. Tom Hall. Well, what drew you then to Apogee and 3D Realms? Well, actually, um, the guys that did, you know, were seeing that the relationship wasn't really working out, and they actually talked with Scott and said, hey, you know, Tom's awesome, but, you know, something's not fitting here, so let's let's just do Wolfenstein 3D Part 2. So I said, oh, you know, that's cool, we'll do that. And then uh, just over time, they got busy or, or uh, didn't think it was id-like or something, which is kind of the whole problem all over again. Uh, but I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, it turning it into a, suddenly a different game with very little time uh, caused a bizarre story to come out. But uh, who cares? You know, it's just, you can justify anything with one sentence, pretty much. Uh, and just had a lot of fun with it. Uh, the God mode in that game was actually inspired by a sound Romero would make when he'd uh, no clip through walls. So he'd like, I am, you know, this, you know, demon that can walk through walls. Ooh, you know, go like that. And it was so funny. I just put that in as the sound for God mode. And uh, then I just, you know, had fun with it. Just like, well, there's a God mode. Flip it around. There could be a dog mode, you know. And actually, <laughs> that was kind of funny making a dog uh, be a character and, and able to use little places and stuff. But the God mode was just sort of like, Let's take something that's in games already, which is, you know, just turning off so you can't get hurt, and make it an actual feature in a game. You know, that's what I did with Anachronox. It's like, well, every, you know, 3D games have cursors. Let's make that a character. That could be a character. And, and those kind of things that interest me is that how can we just make something completely new and, or something that's been around completely new again? Do you like working with Scott Miller? Uh, yeah, well, I mean... Scott Miller's uh, Miller model, as he called it, of, of giving away the first shareware game and then selling you the trilogy of them was what drove a lot of our success. It was uh, when we violated that kind of we got convinced to do a commercial version of Commander King 6 rather than making a trilogy. And uh, although it was successful, four and five, you only got. 50% more so that people weren't like, wow, this is an amazing deal, you know? Um, so I, I think that was really a driver of success. I, I you know, uh, it would have been great if, if Apogee slash three realms could have grown with it, but they, they had their way of doing things. And I think it kind of outgrew them over time. Yeah. 2001, we get an Akronox, a third person role-playing game. Uh, that's definitely a, a cult classic. I was kind of surprised as uh, reading about it this uh, this morning. I didn't realize that apparently the development of this game was quote long and difficult. A lot of uh, stuff apparently got cut out. Uh, I was just kind of wondering what you thought about the you know what was it like going through the development of the game and, and what was the stuff that was cut out. Well, um, the game the the team for the game. I mean that was there at the end and or near the end stuff like that. Those uh, those are like my family. Almost, you know, like my my brother. We went through a war story together, and uh, <clears throat> um, it was difficult because there's a lot of chaos at Ion Storm, and and you know, it's all in the news, and and you can read about it. Uh, there's a guy that was there, Christian Divine, and he wrote a car hardcore elegy to Ion Storm, which kind of details the history and what was cool about it. So, but. Amongst that chaos, that made it really hard to keep your mind in the game, as it were. And uh, it was a an arduous process uh, to fight through to, to get that thing done. But the 
and we started with people that really hadn't made games before some of them uh it was sort of giving them their shot but we kind of got too generous at <laughs> all at the same time so getting th through all that um the, the some of the core team uh that develops i mean jake strider hughes did my video for worlds of wander he was the guy that did the cinematics for anachronox and was the producer so i mean there's that love and uh and you know all the the talented, talented people. Uh, Joey was brilliant. School was brilliant. Uh, Lee Perry, who's now has Bit Monster, he was brilliant. There's, I mean, going on. There's just so many brilliant folks. Uh, Richard Gobert who did the writing. It was just you know that game won best writing award. Uh, so clearly it was, and it got fifth or sixth funniest game of all time. So uh, uh, that's a lot due to to Richard's brilliance and Jake's brilliance as a director and stuff. Uh, but that, that game was, yeah, it broke a lot of people. I mean, uh, it's just like there, I mean, there are times when we had crunched so long that, you know, something would break and a guy would just stare at the game and go, Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> you know, it's just like, they're just broken. And we'd like, we we're, were there so much. We play a little assassin game. So you had to sneak into somebody else's cubicle and, you know, point your fingers at some part of their body to like, uh, prove that you were a master assassin or something like that. And uh, so Richie was going to sneak in on Joey and Joey had rigged up like video cameras so he could not be snuck up on, but they weren't pointing at the back of his cubicle where there's a wall. So Richie took his shoes off and jumped over the wall and landed softly in his things while he was, you know, listening to headphones or something like that. And he snuck in and like put a gun on, in, into his leg, which is, you know, the most vulnerable, I was like, and then he just like, oh, <laughs> he just broke him for about 20 minutes. <laughs> he was like, oh my God, you know, I've been so paranoid all this time. And there's just so many crazy stories from Ian Storm off to write a book about it. I can't write completely about it because we're contractually obligated not to write completely about it, but uh, that's an interesting story. And, and the thing, yeah, we did like a year and a, three months of crunch, seven days a week, like 16 hours a day. And that's the last time I want to do that. That's, <laughs> that is that is it. You don't need to work uh, more than 12 hours normally or 10 or 12 hours normally. And you know, there's always a little bit of crunch to get something to a deadline, but it shouldn't be that long. But I'm mean, really proud of the game. I think it turned out really fun. And... Uh, and yeah, it was it was it was quite a uh, crazy trip, but uh, I'm, I'm really proud of the game that came out, and I, it uh, it innovated in a lot of ways. It just sat it, it spent you know millions getting it done, and uh, that was you know IDOS deserves all credit for sticking with us and 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 getting the game done, but uh, it really didn't get a lot of advertising budget, so that's why a lot of people feel, well, where was this game? This is awesome, you know that kind of thing. Ah well. So if you had the chance, would you make a sequel to it? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, that gets to the other half of your question is that uh, at a certain point in the project, we had this, you know, I really detailed out the story of what was going to happen. And we, you know, sort of got our, our heads around how long it took to make things. And we're, you know, a team of 15 people making a game that Squaresoft takes 150 people to make, which was kind of hubris, I guess. But... Uh, We'd finally got around our, uh, you know, this is what the game is. This is what it's doing. How long is this going to take? And like, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> so we could either like rush through the story or sort of cut it in half at a, a shocking moment. And we cut it in half at a shocking moment. So there's about, you know, about 40% left of the, the game that if I get my dreams fulfilled, I'll get the IP back and make someday. That's a good segue into this question from uh, Robert Florence. As he wants me to ask, uh, I want to, this is from uh, Robert. He says, I want to know what game uh, you would make, or what game would you want to create with a team if you could, uh, let me see if I can get this question right. Uh, so basically, if you could put together whatever team you wanted uh, with a whatever budget that you needed, uh, what kind of game would you be making? Um, I'd, I mean, if I could just have my druthers, I would make both another Commander Keen and uh, an Akronox. 
I think an uh, Anachronox, uh, just because since I got into making games as a medium, that was the one that really sort of expressed, you know, real character arcs and real variety of gameplay and, and a real adventure, an epic adventure that uh, really, you know, took you grand places and had you do grand things. And, and uh, it even had, you know, a lot of, flavor of the old graphic adventure games like from lucas arts and stuff there's you know a lot of things you did or was kind of fine stuff in that way and it it kind of encapsulated a lot of things i love i i work a little bit harder in the battle system because there are so many things in there but uh uh that that would be the the team that we had there uh were they are all my my brothers and sisters and and that was a sort of a magic team to get together and and do a, a great game these are the developers of incredible power no this this is the anachronox team uh developers of Incredible power is rise of the triad okay so you didn't have a, a name for them uh it was a team anachronox or something like that you know we just uh, you mentioned something about the battle system in anachronox what what were you unhappy with um well, I mean, it was it was a Final Fantasy esque battle system, and I, I mean the battle system was cool, and there was a lot of variety and a lot of cool things you could do with it. I just uh, I'd probably you know stick in more battles and uh, uh, sort of more decisions that people can choose differently rather than you know just finding concrete things and so on. But I mean. I love the, the battles as they were. I just, you know, want more of them and, and more variety and stuff. All right, there's a question from James Lacey. He wants to know if you have any plans to try the Shaker Shaker Kickstarter again. And have you talked to whoever has the Anachronox rights? Uh, yes. Uh, as I sort of say in the video, it was sad to leave Keen behind because... Uh, Zenimax bought it, and Zenimax has been contacted twice, and they say we do not want to license or sell the IP. Just business-like letter, no discussion. Uh, and similarly, SquareSoft, uh, Square Enix now, has bought items, and they were approached, and they wrote back a business-like letter: we do not want to sell or license the IP. Just. That's the standard business response, never sell IP because that's part of the value of the company. And uh, it's unfortunate because I don't want to make that property without owning it because you, know, you put your heart into it, but then that won't make the money. I mean, I'm, I was, you know, talked to id and Zenimax and stuff like that. I'm <clears throat> willing to do ridiculous amounts of like, you can get a large percentage of the profits up until, you know, like millions of dollars or something like that. I just want to own the IP and just no. You know, what is that the story is told well, not the money. And they don't want to, uh, those companies aren't interested in the money. For some. Yeah, you think they would be more willing to talk. It's not like you expect to get it for free or anything. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, like all some tell me, you know, what this would cost. I'll try to make that happen somehow. And there's just no discussion whatsoever. Hmm. I understand biz folks. I guess that's why I'm a creative person. <laughs> well, as far as the, trying the Shaker Kickstarter again, any interest in that? Um, well, we worked on Shaker and stuff like that. Brenda wanted to make it sort of come to life as a board game. So she's working on that. And I think that would be really cool. Uh, you know, I'd love to sort of, you know, I, we each sort of like uh, did a character for the Shaker thing, and uh, uh, I'd work with her on that if she wants to uh, work on the other character uh, during Cole. But um, yeah, as far as I know, she's she's got that in her sort of uh, back burner to work on, and uh, if it comes to fruition, that's cool. If we get to work together, that'd be cool. But other than that, that's that's the current plan. All right, Tom, so I got one last question here. This is from Alan uh, Vallely. He wants to know, what have you learned in general about Kickstarter doing all these projects? Um, well, uh, first off, the first Kickstarter, we sort of learned that 
it's it's less of we sort of went into it with sort of a let's collaborate with the community like we want to make an old school RPG you know we did some great ones in the day let's communi- collaborate with the community and come to what this thing is and that's not really what Kickstarter is Kickstarter is oh this could be exist I want that you know it's a sort of insta purchase kind of feeling you know or uh, you know like you can have input to it but you just want this thing crystallized in front of you so it did that with uh, worlds of wander and uh you know did the best way it could but uh, i think a little bit of the hybrid nature of it maybe people aren't understanding there's a you know a server back in a community that has to be built around this thing for this thing to really thrive uh is uh confusing some folks or something like that i think it's it's you know it's, it's a going to be a really cool platform game and a really cool tool and you know i just you know love to to get this thing funded and 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 work on that uh really hard for folks but if, if people you know are just kind of unsure what the the technology is and what the what the the back end means to really revving up community you know we'll work it on our own and and get it done somehow all right thanks a lot tom is there anything else that you wanted to to mention or plug or questions uh, that you wish i had asked that didn't uh, uh yes uh no well i don't know i mean obviously the the current thing i want to talk about is kickstarter uh weirdly the weirdest thing i think in my career though has been that people like really liked the voice acting job i did on deus ex the walton simons and that was a cold read of the script like I had, I hadn't even like got the lines down, and you know, I just said, "Have they been infected?" And all that you know, stuff. And the, the the one of the lines in the intro is so long that I was just trying to get through it. It's like so much exposition. It's like ridiculously long. I mean, obviously, it shouldn't have been cut down, but I got through it and says, "Okay, now I'm gonna, you know, get that one down, you know, in this character." And he's like, "Oh, that's good." <laughs> I was like, "What?" <laughs> give me enough chance i want to do a little bit better but i mean people like the i, I think i got a, a inkling of that voice from there's a show i believe called murder one and the protagonist of the show is this you know tough cop dude or whatever investigator and he had this ridiculously low voice it's just like all right no, we're gonna, and this is like do people actually talk like that but i thought well this weird guy with you know vein head dude i can talk like that because obviously he's super evil and been augmented so he could be altered to you know talk like that and i just had a lot of fun with it to fema should be finalized within the week i've already discussed the matter with the senator i take it he was agreeable he didn't really have a choice has he been infected oh yes most certainly when i mentioned that we could put him on the priority list for the ambrosia vaccine he was so willing it was almost pathetic this play, the rioting is intensifying to the point where we may not be able to contain it. Why contain it? Let it spill over to the schools and churches. Let the bodies pile up in the streets. In the end, they'll beg us to save them. We could have done the whole interview with that voice. Yes. <laughs> I, once in a while, I just, you know, like if I'm on Skype or interview with somebody, and one of them, have they been affected again with the thing? <laughs> Oh. All right, folks, we'll get over to the Kickstarter. I guess by the time this comes out, this it will be over. Uh, right. Well, how can people stay in? What's the best way people can keep tabs on you? Um, uh, just uh, follow our Facebook page, uh, Pieces of Fun. Follow us on Twitter, Pieces of Fun News. And uh, and just keep in touch, and we're just gonna keep making this in the background, and uh, we'll open it up to uh, community folks. It'll be a little more manual than it, it, it would be for front and stuff like that, but none the same. You get to check out stuff and uh, maybe do it sort of uh, Minecraft style, where you just here's the alpha, you know, have your input and stuff like that, and we'll, we're gonna make this thing together, and we'll see how that goes. All right, Tom. Well, thanks so much for this. I. I'll post, try to post the first part of this uh, probably Sunday, uh, so there'll be some time, and I really hope that uh, it'll make. Yeah, me too, because uh, we really wanted to empower folks, because I, you know, I want to make this cool tool and then play what other people make. <laughs>
I really do <laughs> because I love playing some games and it'd be really fun to see like the stuff of like giving people the literal pieces of fun since that's the name of the company. I mean, you're giving them people pieces of fun and let them put together and then play something new with those pieces. It's, it's exciting. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next week and, not quite sure what I want to do. Lots of uh, great games uh, that have come out. Uh, indie games that have a definite retro vibe to them. Uh, there's one called uh, uh, Dead State. <laughs> Took me a minute to remember that. I've really been enjoying that. There's another one called Craft the World uh, that I've been in really enjoying. And Lords of Zula, uh, Zulima. I think that's Zulima. Uh, Zulima. But anyway, I've played all those. Really enjoyed them. If you would like to see me review one of those, uh, let me know. Otherwise, I might go into the vaults and just pull out some uh, really great game from the Golden Age that I haven't covered yet. So lots of those, too. Anyway, always interested to hear your ideas about uh, episodes uh, or games that you'd like to see covered in retrospectives. Uh, as always, I want to thank you very, very much if you have supported me in my efforts at preserving video game history. Could not do it without you guys. Thank you very much for that. If you would like to become a supporter, lots of different ways uh, you can uh, just buy the games uh, that are mentioned on the show from time to time. I will put links to the GOG sites, uh, or GOG pages for those, and those are affiliate links. So if you use those links, it doesn't cost you anything extra, and you can get the games like Anachronox and uh, Rise of the Triad, and Matt Chat will get a little kickback that way. Uh, but if you want to be more effective with your donations, uh, just go to the Patreon site in the show notes. That will also get you access to some bonus episodes and hangouts. And uh, by the way, I'm just about ready to start a, uh, a new podcast series. It will just be uh, me doing monologues, if you will, about different... I haven't quite decided what to do yet, but it's going to be lots of fun. I'm actually uh, kind of torn between a history show uh, versus just sort of commentary about uh, recent developments and, and new stuff coming out. So, um, you know, as again, you know, let me know what you would like to do, or, or like to hear, rather. And I'll see what I can uh, see what I can do. <clears throat> All right. What about news from the Matt Cave? Uh, lots of pretty cool stuff uh, I could talk about here. The uh, main thing, though, for me is the release of the uh, Dead State game I just mentioned. If you like, the, I've been playing it for about uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Feels like like about 12, uh, 12 to eighteen hours. Uh, feels like a really fun game. If you like the original Fallout games. And uh, if you like Wasteland 2, it's not quite as, uh, uh, you know, I don't know how really yet how to compare it to Wasteland 2. Uh, it's a little rough around the edges. Uh, you're definitely going to get some crashes to the desktop, a few little bugs. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an indie game, you know, you can definitely tell that. Uh, on the other hand, it's uh, quite polished in other ways. Really enjoying the, the mix of strategy and tactics and uh, you sort of building up this, this shelter. At the same time, you're having lots of turn-based combat. Uh, so, and lots of uh, story and characters in there, so it's, it's, been, uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I do, I think I probably will end up covering that, uh, but I thought I would put it on your radar in case uh, you haven't heard about it yet. Let's see, is there other news? I, uh, oh, yeah, I wanted to mention Retro Magazine. Uh, they have, uh, they recently did another Kickstarter to launch their second season, or second series, or volume, whatever they're calling it. Uh, very successful. Uh, they, they they tried to tap me to do a couple things for them. Uh, they've had some different ideas, uh, but lately they wanted a, they, they want me to do a cover article for them, which is kind of exciting, about the uh, rise and fall of the adventure game genre. You know, it sort of fell on hard times there in the, I'd say after the late '90s into into uh, the 2000s. It's kind of been pretty hard to find a lot of uh, fun adventure games, but uh, we definitely see a reversal of that now with Tim Schafer. And uh, Ryan Gilbert's, you know, the uh, Thimbleweed Park, uh, that was very successful. The Double Fine Adventure stuff, the, you know, uh, the, the uh, Walking Dead, uh, Telltale Games, Monkey Island uh, remakes and all. I mean, just a ton of stuff going on. Uh, but anyway, I'd like to hear your thoughts on what I might put into that article. Or if you're really into adventure games, you know, what, what, what's really exciting to you out there right now? Okay, I think that'll do it for the news. Uh, what about that Ale of the Week? Well, this week I've got a uh, in an American pale ale, 
Ordinary Guys Brewing Extraordinary Beer. It's called The Ringer. Uh, this is a brewery called Fulton, and the cool thing is right out of Minneapolis, uh, just down the road, about an hour away, um, let's see, Minneapolis, Minnesota, <laughs> Minneapolis, Minnesota, in case you're not from uh, the U.S. Let's see, The Ringer, bright hops, light body, and a clean finish. <laughs> uh, alcohol, 5%. So not bad. Uh, let's see. The Fulton Manifesto. Ooh, they've got a manifesto. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, let's see. Everything worth doing is worth doing with soul. You know, that I would agree with. And that's very true for games as well as beer. You can always tell a game that was just made for money without that soul. You know, and if you want a, a game that, a role playing game that has a lot of soul, I always recommend uh, Might and Magic 6. Just play that for a while, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, what else? Uh, extraordinary lives deserve extraordinary beer. Hmm. I think I read that before, having deja vu. Anyway, let's get this ringer open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this ringer. Ah, here in the rather excellent drinking... Horn, it smells really good. Kind of a uh, pine, pine needles-like scent to this. I don't remember what they said anything about what was in this. Sometimes they tell you what kind of hops are in it, but I don't, I don't see that here. Now what's this? 10% of profits invested in the Folio, Ful, Fulton Fund. <laughs> the Fulton Fund, is that their, their pocket fund, I wonder? Uh, anyway, maybe they've got some you know, maybe I'm doing some civil, uh, civic service just by buying this beer. <sighs> not, not, not a real strong scent. Definitely smells some kind of a, a little bit of the hops. Like I said, a little bit of a, a pine-like, a, a resin-like scent to it. Actually, smells smells pretty good, so let's give it a taste. A little bit of a, a, little bit of a flavor there. <laughs> To get that sort of a little bit of the cornflake taste um, it's not very strong at all actually quite a quite a shall we say liquidy <laughs> let me try it again you know it's, it's not bad it's um how to describe that it's a little bit of a bitter taste it's uh, not real strong it's sort of mostly water you <laughs> know what can i say not a whole lot of a punch to this. It's not bad though. I do kind of like the, the slightly bitter edge to it. I definitely would prefer this over a uh, Budweiser or Coors or something like that. But, you know, again, life is short and uh, <laughs> this isn't cheap uh, beer. So I kind of like a little bit more of, a, of an experience when I'm drinking uh, the Ringer. So really it's, I'll try it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> They're local boys. I guess I can give them a, a fourth try. It's, yeah, all I can say, it's not bad, uh, but there's just not a whole lot of flavor. Um, so I guess I'll go, you know, I'm going to go three out of five drinking horns on this. If you uh, want something that's sort of halfway between a uh, something like a Budweiser and maybe a, uh, a Pale Ale by the likes of uh, Flying Dog, you know, somewhere in the middle of the middle there where you don't really get blown away by flavor but it's not you're not drinking something tasteless either uh this seems to fit the bill <laughs> how's that for an endorsement but i don't think they're going to be putting that bullet point on their website uh, but three out of five drinking horns you know not bad uh, but not great all right let's wrap this up with a quotation and i was uh trying to think of a good quotation uh, for the show and i was thinking about deus ex and all of the uh, sort of government uh, angles to that. So I thought I would find a quotation from uh, Herbert Hoover. And I found one that goes something like this. A great many things go around in the dark besides Santa Claus. <laughs> I have no idea what the context for that quote was, but it sounded pretty cool to me. See you guys next week. Well, you know, actually, I'm not here for Dianimo. I'm here to finish her job. What did you say? 
The tunnels. The mist tech. I'm your man. I'm experienced and expensive. Available. Yeah, and desperate from the look of it. No thanks.